just how fast this happens. Okay, hey Maureen, I'm glad to be back. I've been um, a little crazy busy doing stuff uh, for my new booth, so I apologize. I know I miss y'all when I'm gone, and I know y'all miss me too. So I have two colors, okay guys? I have Anita's White, and I have Americana Calypso. They're already on my plate over here, so I'm just gonna show you real quick, okay? Wet brush, and I am, do not have enough white on my palette. Hey, Kathy from Texas. Thank you for the sprinkles. Hey, Jerry. Okay, so wet brush. This is a three quarter inch flat. I'm just gonna cover my entire canvas with white, okay? Just quick and easy. Just getting it covered doesn't have to look perfect. I like to always, even when I'm gonna leave my canvas white, I like to put a coat of white on my canvas because sometimes when you get these canvases from, I need to fix that real quick. Sometimes when you get these canvases from the store, they only really have a primer and then they'll have some little dirty spots or some imperfections and you don't want to, you don't want to deal with that. So get a coat of white and then I'm literally, go, you see this Calypso right here on my palette, that tiny dot of dark blue, that teal. See how much I have on my brush? That is such a tiny amount of the teal calypso and basically i'm just going to wiggle it on okay so i'm just making some squiggles i want it to be a little darker in the middle and on the bottom then i do uh oh hang on that's my brush because sometimes i get lazy hey lisa and sometimes i get lazy and leave my brushes sitting in water for too long and then they get icky so, I'm sorry, this is, Judy, this is a five by seven. So, all I'm doing is just squiggling on some color. Voila, done, okay? That's it. Just a little bit of blue and white, kind of abstract. Just get it on for a little bit of color. No big deal. And now we are ready to do the good stuff, because this one's already dry. It's like watching the cooking show when they put it in the oven and voila, it's magic. They already have uh, one prepared. Okay, so I've already also kind of laid out my glass pieces on a clean canvas so I could make sure I have the pieces I need for each fishy, okay? So what I usually start with is a triangular piece can see that and these these pieces I cut or I broke from a ornament one of those uh, we're making a fish one of those round uh, uh, blown glass ornaments uh, that was broken so I just cut it into the size piece I wanted I always start with like a little triangle that's going to, it is pretty isn't it so that's going to be his head. Now, I have two pieces that came from this same little ball that I'm gonna use for his little tail fins. And then another, just a little scrap for his bottom fin. And then this is like just an old piece of glass from my glass chip bin for his top fin, okay? But he has to have a body, right? You can't have a fish without a body, all right? I see I have paint on my wine glass now, hang on. That's against the rules. We don't eat paint. Okay, so what I wanna do now is give him a body. So because this glass is really similar to the cobalt that we use a lot, I'm gonna use, hello Janet, hello Kim. I'm gonna use a little bit of this cobalt reflective um, that means, if you're new here, that means it's cobalt on one side and mirrored on the other. So it's a reflective glass. So I'm going to use that just to kind of shape his body. And I, what I normally do is just create somewhat of an egg type shape, just an oval shape in the center of my canvas. 
you want it to kind of come to a point because that's where his little back fins are gonna go. So you want it kind of fat here because we're gonna lay that head onto his, onto that part of his body. And then you want it to kind of be fat and then come to a point down on, <laughs> well, Diana, I know, but it was my favorite wine glass, so I wanted to get it off, it's okay. I just licked it. <laughs> so here we're gonna place our two little tail fins, super cute. And before I put the other two pieces on, I wanna make sure that this glass is kind of laying how I want it to. And what I don't want for the glass that's going to be under his head, okay? His little rect, his little triangle shaped head, I don't want it to be doubled up. Do you know what I mean by that? I don't want two pieces of glass to be stacked on top of each other because once we start to resin, it's super hard to get that double stacked glass covered without just taking everything back apart. So if it's just one layer of glass, as the resin seeps around underneath, um, it will uh, cover all that res or the resin will cover all that glass and you won't have a big problem. So let me see. I can't, so I have to kind of manipulate that just a little bit. And then I wanna make sure that there's a little extra glass and a little extra fatness to the rest of his body. So we're gonna kind of fatten him up because he's a cool fish. We do want these pieces to be fatter. So I'm gonna add a little more glass to where it needs some thickness. Just here and there. And now we can add his little fins. Let's see. All right, so he's got a nice little shape now. And see, that just took a tiny handful of glass, just hardly any. Um, so now I have this other little piece that we're gonna use for his bottom fin. So I'm just gonna angle it right under his belly, right there. And then I have this glass chip. I don't know why I can't get in the camera. I have this cute little glass chip in the same colorway that uh, I'm gonna add to the top. So that'll be his top fin. And before we do anything else, I want to give him a little face, okay? Because we can't have a blind fish. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the Anita's Classic Gold. I'm not even gonna put it on my palette. Thank you, Judy, for sending stars. I'm gonna take a liner brush, which is just like a script brush, and dip it into a little bit of gold, and I'm just gonna dot him on a little eyeball. I wanna see that up close and personal. Now we'll have to give him a little time to dry. So I just gave him a cute little gold eye right there. Should have done that ahead of time but we're gonna work with it. We are going to work it out. So let's make sure all our pieces look good. Everything's copacetic. Let's put the top back on this. And okay guys, what? Thank you, Mary. Thank you so much. So what is a fish without bubbles, right? So we have to add bubbles. Hey Kim, how are you? So I'm gonna add, these are the little acrylic bubbles. I have these on my website, but you can also buy them at uh, your craft stores, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, places like that. So I'm just gonna add maybe three bubbles right around his head. And the last thing I'm gonna do is give his body a little something extra, extra. So I have this cute, cute little cobalt looking iridescent glass chip that I am gonna just lay right here in the center of his body just to give him a little extra oomph. Now I'm done. That is awesome. Richard would do one with a googly eye, wouldn't he? So you can do this in any color glass that you have. It's super cute. Thank you 
for that, guys. So look how cute he is. Yes. Uh, the craft-a-thon jewelry was over the weekend. Um, it was on Saturday, and they left it up until, uh, I think they brought it down this morning, and you can only still view it if you paid to be in, I think it was $10 to be in the group, I think. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's the way it went, Jerry. Go to Southern Crush. That is the page we did it on, and check there. So anyway, is he not adorable? OMG, so cute. So I am making like 20 of these this week. Um, I'm gonna go alive again tomorrow, but I'm gonna try to get all my fish done tonight after we go, get off here. And so we won't be doing fish again tomorrow, but we are, I think we're gonna do an octopus. So stay tuned. Don't forget to come back tomorrow uh, and hang with us for that. So I'm gonna move these two things out of the way. I am going to, uh, it's a five by seven Colette. So I am going to put my little fishy on his block. He's so cute. And you could add a little bit of clear glass down here or some seashells or whatever. I'm kind of a keep it simple kind of girl. So I like the focus to be the fish, but you do you. I do me. So let's glove up. Thank you, Linda. So let's glove up and make some resin. So I already pre-mixed my resin. So what I mixed was one ounce, okay? Or I didn't mix it, I measured it. So I have a half an ounce of hardener and a half an ounce of resin. What I use is, yes, Carol. What I use is Art Resin, if you didn't know. Um, it is a two-part resin and it is, um, uh, you do it by measurement, not by weight. It's a 50-50 mix. So whatever resin you're using, um, you want to uh, follow the directions on that resin. Amy, um, they are all have resin on them, so I can't show you those right now, but I promise in the morning I will show you the pictures of all the fish on the table, and then uh, tomorrow night we will do our octopus. So I usually just do it that way. So yes, I will show you all the fish in the morning. Um, so let's see, La -da 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 -da. eyeball, he has an eyeball. You just can't see it because of, see his little gold eye? You just can't see it because of, uh, it's a little far from the camera. So anywho, so what I have is a half an ounce of hardener and a half an ounce of resin. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix, is my Rima still here? So I'm gonna pour my half ounce of uh, one part into the other. Here I am mixing in two smaller cups again. Really should have room to mix when you are mixing resin. You should have as much room as you do resin, but I'm notorious for breaking the rules, but that don't mean y'all should, <laughs> right? It's like, it's like your mom, do as I say, not as I do. So I have one full ounce of resin here and it's not even gonna take this much resin, okay guys? I'll tell you exactly how much it took once we're done applying, oops, applying the resin to our cute little fishy. All right, so Rima, are you ready, boo? So we have to mix this for three minutes. So I have to stir, 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 scrape my sides, scrape the bottom, and very slowly mix my resin for three solid minutes. Okay, so don't cut corners with that because the saddest thing is when you cut a corner and you pour this all over your art piece and then you come back the next day and it's still sticky because you didn't either measure correctly or mix correctly. So always make sure you follow the directions to a T. Okay, so anybody have any questions while I'm mixing? Because this is the longest three minutes ever. When I'm mixing, it's like, oh, somebody talk to me, please.
<laughs> I promise not to stop, Rima. My, my hands are going. Busy making CC maps two weeks ago, plus they are going in a furniture store. Donna, um, I hate to seem stupid, but what's a CC map? Am I crazy? Am I stupid? A CC map. Huh. Please explain. I'm not stopping. Not stopping. <laughs> Are we frozen? My iPad's frozen. Huh, I don't know. I think you are to let people know about using respirators so they don't have any lung problems, okay? Here's what I always tell people about resin, okay? What I use is Art Resin, okay? I use Art Resin and I use it because it is a non-hazmat, non-VOC, no BPAs, no COV resin, okay? You should always be careful when, when you are mixing uh, chemicals together, resins together, and follow the directions on the bottle when it comes to safety. Okay, you should always wear gloves. You should always have eye protection. You should always have um, a, a respirator if you need one. Um, so my goal is to tell you to follow the directions on the, yeah, don't buy the cheaper stuff. Follow the directions on your um, resin because I, 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 I want you to be safe. I'm sorry, <coughs> I didn't mean to, Raymond, stop yelling at me. I want you to be safe. I don't want you to have respiratory problems, but you do need to be sure um, and do and mix your resin according to the manufacturer directions. Make sure you have uh, fresh air, make sure it's ventilated, make sure you have gloves, make sure you do all the things. I am not responsible for your personal safety, so please, 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 whatever your, um, whatever the resin you're using, follow the directions for application on that uh, resin, okay? Please. I did have, get a chemical burn a month or so ago for doing something super stupid because what I did was uh, torched resin in a not, thank you, Rima, in a non-ventilated area for the first time in the 10 years that I have been doing resin, I did, I done, I did a stupid thing. So don't do me. Always follow the directions and always keep your safety in mind. Bye, Richard. Hello, Steffi Rosie Hosey. How are you, love? I am, Rima. <laughs> Just for that, I'm having a sip of wine. Cheers. You can't just holler at me. Okay, I'm gonna move his cute little head for a minute and I'm gonna get my little stick and I'm gonna drizzle that uh, resin right on that single layer of glass that we made so that we can ensure that that is covered because we are going to move and put his head right back on. You can't leave him headless, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and resin the rest of his little body. He's so cute. Thank you, Debbie. Look at all the stars. You are making me feel like a star. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, drizzle the resin on the rest of his body. And if you're new here, I want you to remember to, you know, we talked about safety a little bit. Just, you know, follow the directions. Please always be safe. But also, I have my little fishy elevated on, and I'll show you in just a second, but he's elevated on a little block off of my canvas, okay, or off of my table. And the reason we do that is because uh, sometimes we get overzealous with the resin and it will run down the sides of your canvas. And if your canvas is sitting on a flat surface, 
like your table or paper, then your resin is going to drip onto that. Get out of my way. I need to hang on. See, I'm talking too much and not paying attention to what I'm doing. Um, it will glue your art piece to whatever it's sitting on, and you do not want that to happen, okay? So, and I'll show you that as soon as I'm done here. So I'm gonna get his uh, little head covered. I'm gonna be super careful around his little golden eye because it might still be wet. So I'm just gonna be really careful there. Let's cover his bubbles. You a rock star. <laughs> I can't wait for you guys to see the octopus we're gonna do tomorrow. It's gonna to be so cute. So now I'm just gonna take a little bit of that resin and smear it around the rest of my canvas. I don't ever do my edges unless I just have so much running off my canvas that I need to do the edges. I just, that's a personal preference though, guys. I just don't like my edges done. It creates drips on the back side of your canvas and it's a waste of resin in my opinion. That's just me. Again, you do you. <laughs> I'm all about it. Some people like to have their sides done. Me, I prefer not. So it's, it's, there's no wrong. No right or wrong way. This took almost the whole ounce of resin. Hang on. So I wanna make sure it's all covered. I'm moving my bubbles around, but I'm gonna move them back. I'm gonna move them. Put one right by his nose. All right, so now I see a little bit of debris. So I, let me tell you what I used first. I used, I still have, gosh, it's so hard to see these terrible cups. I still have a teaspoon, which is a little less than half a tablespoon, whatever a teaspoon is. So I'll be able to pour this on my next little piece, but I do see some debris. So I'm gonna use my little toothpick and just kind of pick this out. And I know it's because my air conditioning's blowing in here because I came up here earlier today when I started painting all my fish canvases and it was hotter than blue blazes up here. The thermostat was on for the upstairs was on 75 and it was so miserable, I couldn't even stand to be up here. So I had to turn that air on and it is still running and it's blowing crap everywhere so it's putting kind of putting stuff in my piece probably gold leaf from the other day okay so now that we have our little fish covered with resin i'm going to take my gloves off and i'm going to take them off i'm going to try, try to take them off so that i can salvage them because Gloves are a commodity these days, and I did not get resin on my gloves. Hey, Miss Tracy, is he not cute? And yes, about the same time tomorrow, Elizabeth. Let's see. And I'm gonna hit this fella with a blowtorch. I know that sounds crazy, but I use this uh, blowtorch from Home Depot. It's got the automatic lighter on it, but you don't have to use this, guys. You can use like a, um, a heat gun or one of those tiny little creme brulee torches. Uh, you do not have to use this big monster. I just use this because it's what I'm used to uh, after years and years of using resin. And the reason we torch it is to pop any of those bubbles that we created when we mixed our resin. Because anytime you mix two things together, you're incorporating air. Hang on. You're incorporating air into that mix and it creates little bubbles. But one thing I do wanna tell you and I always say is, what you want to do is keep that torch moving, okay? You don't ever wanna stop and focus on just one spot. And you also want 
to keep the flame of the torch, whether it's a creme brulee torch or a big old torch, you wanna keep the flame off of your resin and about four to six inches away from your art piece because what's popping those bubbles is the heat from the torch and not the fire. So don't do fire. So look, I see a little piece of debris again. Hang on, we want him out of there. We can't have debris in our ocean. Thank you. So look how cute as hay. He is stinking adorable. I can't be still. Hey, maybe put my elbows down. <laughs> he is so cute, isn't he?